So for Christmas, my lovely girlfriend got me a gaming PC. But it was PC parts, so I had to build the PC. So let's jump back to the 25th of December and let's enjoy me struggling to build this PC. The case is the CK560, a very solid budget-ish case. The motherboard is the ASRock B650 Pro RS, a solid mid-range option. The boot drive is a 990 Pro 1 terabyte NVMe. Kingston Fury Renegade, 32 gigs at 6000 megahertz CL32. And the star of the show, the Ryzen 7 7700. Oh, that was hard to pronounce. And it's going to be cooled by the Deepcool AK620 Big Boy Cooler. So before we can build the new PC, I first needed to steal a few parts from the old PC. Namely, my uh, many, many hard drives and SSDs, the GPU, my RTX 3060 Ti, and the power supply, my TX650M. I have four drives in my old PC, two SSDs and two hard drives, so I want to take them with me as well. You can see it's just like a fucking... It's... It's a cable management where what I've never heard of that and it's obvious it's obvious that this is it's ridiculous <laughs> It's just look at it man <laughs> So here it is everything that I'm taking with me very dusty hard drives very dusty SSDs a very dusty GT RTX fucking GTX and a very dusty TX 650m Let's begin the build first off the beautiful pro RS motherboard and boxing you might have noticed I've changed locations. I uh, I was working on carpet before. It's not good to work on carpet, so I went on to the non-carpeted area. And I've got no socks on. But yes, after very carefully uh, unboxing the motherboard because I've never handled such new parts, it's time to install a CPU. I went with the 7000 series instead of the 5000 series because I do a lot of editing and a lot of Photoshop. So this, you know, the extra power will help. The RAM is nothing special. It is relatively low latency, CL32, 32 gigs, 6000 megahertz. It's pretty, oh, mm, those snaps are so good. Hopefully I don't snap the motherboard, of course. So I'm not gonna lie, I've never even handled NVMEs, let alone install one. So I had a few a few issues with my installation. I think it's going fine, you can see it, it's going to click. Well, that's not the click, that's me dropping it slightly. There we go, beautiful click. But but then I did something stupid. I bolted the NVMe down before installing the heatsink. And then I realized, as you can see, that the heatsink has its bolt, it already has a bolt. And I, of course, removed the NVMe heatsink thermal pad. I was doing this while watching... For now, it's time to move on to your cooler. That probably answers who I was watching. I was watching Linus Tech Tips guides on uh, how to install everything, how to do this perfectly. I've built a few PCs in my lifetime, but they've always been second-hand old parts and I, I wanted to be very careful with this this thing is very expensive and I just didn't want to you know fuck something up I went a bit more expensive with the cooler I bought a tray Ryzen 7 so no cooler plus everybody recommends buying a cooler for the Ryzen's because they like to get heated so they can use all of their power look at this thing it's massive so I went with the AK620 which is a well mid to high tier even you can say air cooler and it just looks so cool <laughs> get it now i place the cooler but i realized that i'm i'm not supposed to because i need to remove the fan first so i can so i'm able to bolt the cooler down onto the motherboard now you can see one of the biggest mistakes i've done you can see that the cooler is slightly crooked well that's how i bolt it down slightly crooked and now my tower cooler is slightly crooked which uh, you know it, I, it angers me but I also don't want to remove it I don't want to reapply thermal paste and everything because the cooler is working fine you can see I'm making another mistake I am installing the fans although correctly airflow wise the cables are on top which is quite ugly and not very efficient not very cable management-y so here I am uh, re reinstalling on installing so the ca the cables stay down low it's time to test the system uh, I forgot to turn it on and I'm like I'm very confused I did not know that the board actually has RGB on it and there it is it started um, there's nothing happening on the screen 
because the monitor was not uh, turned on but the, the board is obviously on there's a red light i was worried a bit but here it is everything is just on we're in the bios 32 gigs of ram the cpu has been uh, located everything is good and then i do this i start test fitting the motherboard in the case i noticed that i might have issues with the rear fan the stock exhaust fan i might have clearance issues with it and then i do this that was the motherboard that was the motherboard scraping on something in the case and you can see now me very carefully moving the motherboard with my hands because it's now very heavy i had a few motherboard standoffs well i tried to add them i it, it was i am struggling uh, yeah it, it was a bit hard i'm not gonna lie i eventually get it in and then it's time to install the motherboard off camera apparently uh, i tighten everything in a crisscross way like i'm tightening a wheel like i'm tightening the wheel nuts the wheel lug nuts and then the really fun part look at the amount of cables that the case this is just the case cables uh the, it's it's man this is where it, oh, it it took me the longest amount of time to rummage through all of the, you can see me just sitting here barely off camera looking through the the little <laughs> the guide the the motherboard in case guides and and all, all the official literature that comes with these things the simple and easy parts the front io the usbs all of those things they are simple they are they are properly marked and named and it's easy but again this was the easy part but you can see me relatively confused on which what goes where on the easy part so uh now that's done for now at least it's time to go with the hard drives we have two hard drives and two ssds to install the case has enough space for all of these but i had a different issue my issue is that my psu my power supply does not have I'm, okay it has i just lost my second sata cable uh modular sata cable thing so i have four sata drives all on one uh, PCI SATA cable thing. So the installment and the arrangement of the hard drives is going to be difficult. But I needed to install the power supply first so I know where the cables will end up. Obviously I'm going to connect the everything else that needs to be connected but it's pretty simple connecting the motherboard, the CPU and all those things. But here we are back at the well very demonic hard drive situation that I'm going to now try and assemble. You can see just how tight the connections are to the drives and you, you know, I'm, yeah, this is what I <laughs> ended up doing. I uh, double-sided tape glued the one of the SSDs, you can see, on top of the AGD case tray thing with the idea is that it's going to connect you know it's going to be it's going to be relatively easy for this to sit on there and then i'm going to use only half of the dedicated 2.5 inch ssd slots so you can see that the crucial mx 500 is slightly floppy there but a it kind of works and it's time to start the pc but i well yeah i forgot to yep there it is beautiful beautiful it's on it works <laughs> man it took me quite a while to get this thing to work it no to assemble this thing everything actually went very smooth but oh yes beautiful the beautiful release